Think about calling this one. What would Pistons check in, man? Like I was like, y'all like the Pistons trends, but I feel like what would Pistons check in is the way to go. It is the way to go, man. And we gotta get all the people to check in as well. What up, though, people? We are recording. And listen, I found Mr. Jeff I Freddy. And yo, yo, yo. Hey, it it really is a Mr. Everything of things for him. I mean, even started off the morning with the show, held it down by himself. Like I always say, man, I'm proud of Jeff I Freddy. Continues to not just be somebody who is uh having new successes every day, but honestly paving the way, man. So definitely. Good job holding it down for a little bit, Dad. Dude, I appreciate it, man. I'm having a blast. <laughs> and, and and shout out to Rod, by the way. If you guys haven't already, go check out the the uh, other World War Pistons podcast, the true one, Kool Aid and uh, Rod. I know he he Good showed dude, some Jeff. love to me. The true one is is exactly what y'all see at the bottom of the screen there, <laughs> and it should be in reverse order: Detroit News, Rod Beer, Jeff Fire, Freddie, and then Detroit Kool Aid. Rod's Humbly, Rod's the man, dude. Because I appreciate doing the stuff with these guys, man. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It is. It is. And look, we got to break bread with you guys. We have to. The Wiseman trade is something that when it first hit, we said last week, we're all like, Pfft. then when the trade got hold up, we were like, we want to see it. And then when he started to play, we were like, hmm. right. And obviously he had the big outburst against the Hornets, 23 and seven. Rod and I talked about it, but Jeff, I wanted to get your take on it. He's now averaging 13 points, eight rebounds a game in 23 minutes. James Wiseman, um, how is... Um, it basically, what you're seeing with the eye test, what you're seeing with the stats, what you're seeing with the analytics, you know, with James Wiseman, what are you, what are you thinking, man? Uh, I love it. I, I think Wiseman, too, you're starting to see him be more comfortable. I know the clip came out, him and Isaiah Stewart chopping it up uh, on the sideline. And that's that's the stuff I look at, too. It, it's more than just how he's playing on the court, just how he interacts with his teammates. Uh, listen to his press conference as well. I just like him. I, I like the guy. I really do. And, and for him to get this opportunity and runway, with especially with Duran out, you saw well he played against the Hornets, man. I know it's the Hornets, but still, like he twenty three and seven, I believe he had. I'm just won a four game winning streak too. Yes, in the Hornets, yeah, surprising. And that was with Lamelo Ball going out too with a fractured foot. Now oh, he has, but geez. I like what I've seen out of Wiseman. I really have. I think defensively, it's more positive than I initially thought it'd be. Uh, in the fact that you have Bagley coming back in the ball, he's been playing, man. Those two guys playing together, it's been, uh. <laughs> it's been honestly better than I expected. I, I can't even lie. I'm excited to see all three when, when Duran gets back, see Duran play and start, and then you see Wiseman and Bagley yeah. more often because those two guys, man, they're very similar players, uh, I guess, offensively right now. I mean, even Wiseman in that in the game against the Hornets, you saw him take it. I mean, it was full court, bro. Full court. court I mean, from court, hoop to hoop. Three-point mid-range, couple yeah. back to the baskets, which I really like. He, he's got he's got a, a, a very expand game. He just hasn't been able to display – uh, with Golden State because he's on a you know a short leash. Now with Detroit, you're going to see things you really never have seen from James Wiseman, or at least haven't seen at the NBA level. So it's exciting, man. Really, I, I think James is frustrated as I initially was, and I've already admitted I was wrong. Um, I, it's okay to be wrong and overreact to things. The more I've thought about it, man, it, it's just if Wiseman can turn into not even he doesn't even have to be the number two overall pick as in a superstar, but if he could just be a a, a good starter. Teams are going to be calling up about James Wiseman. There's going to yeah. be interest for him, no doubt. Yeah, and, and and honestly, I'll save you a little bit here because the initiality of it all was the one-to-one trade, Sadiq Bay for James Wiseman. And still right now, that's still an, a lopsided trade in the favor of whoever got Sadiq Bay. Yep. He's not a bad player. He is a He's a good player. He's a plus player. So it made a lot of fans go, whoa, what's going on here? And as we began to digest and dissect, we started to realize the Pistons are not going to pay Sadiq Bay what Sadiq Bay is asking to be paid. The rumors started coming out already about what four for what ninety mm-hmm. four years ninety m for for Sadiq Bay. So you're not paying that. You're not you're not paying that. So the next best thing is what value can you get? And what Troy Weaver is doing right now is this: he's shown us he can go out there and pay for the players he wants, whether that's Jeremy Grant, Bojan Bogdanovic, or even Alec Burks. Now, these are players that have fit the spectrum all across. They could be guys that can score at a superstar level or at an all-star level, let me put it that way, and like Bojan Bogdanovic. Are there guys that can play defense at an all-NBA level like Jeremy Grant? You know, or there are guys who can kind of start if you need them to, but be very, very consistent sixth-man type starters off the bench like Alec Burks, similar role like Jer- that, that Jamal Crawford and other guards uh, have played off the bench in, in times past. You know, so... 
when you when you look at the makeup of the squad overall, man, like I I, I don't know. It's I don't know, man. It's in uh it's not too much to fret about. He's able to go out there at any point in time and grab one of these guys at mm-hmm. any point in time, whether it's 14 million, 10 million. What is Alec Burks at? 10 million a year? Yeah. Uh, Boyan, 20 million a year. First of all, deals. Yeah. I don't know how he's doing that in this, in this trajectory where guys are getting paid. So if he can do that on that level already and come in and get starter level, all-star level guys, all-star level scores, why not kick the tires a little bit on younger players who you could switch their draft and their um and their roster contract slots. So Sadiq Bay is playing at a, at a rate like Luke Kennard. You know, like Rod brought this up, man. Luke Kennard, right? Four years, 64 million. Troy Weaver knew I'm not paying that. Mm. I'm not paying that. You know, so if you can swap one of those guys, is Wiseman getting one of those contracts? Mind you, uh, Hampton and Wiseman, both of their deals are coming up and decisions have to be made on them. Let me ask you something. And Rod brought this up too. And I wanted to ask you this as well. Wiseman and Hampton, these guys are going to get less money than Killian Hayes and Sadiq Bay, But they may fill roles on the squad that we need right now. So though you might be looking at this thing from a standpoint of why do we have Wiseman? Why do we trade them for him right now just for Sadiq Bay? What else do we get? You got to look at everything else that's going on. The money that they're not going to pay Sadiq Bay. Is going to go to get somebody they can bring in right away and make an impact right away and make a difference right away rather than having to wait. When you have guys like Hampton and Wiseman, that's filling out the end of your roster. That's hopefully filling out maybe based on potential bench starters, maybe spot duty, things like that. So I don't know, man. I like what Troy's doing. I like the way that he's kind of overlaid this thing. I believe that he's insulated himself but he's put a lot of pressure on this off season, this draft. And honestly, up until next trade deadline, he's put a lot of pressure on himself to get it right. Yeah. And with Wiseman too, can how it relates to Bagley is with Bagley, you traded for him as a bag of chips. Essentially you got him and he, and he played well and mm-hmm. you gave him that three-year extension. And it's a pretty affordable contract, by the way, you get, that's a contract that's going to be easily movable. I think it's like 10 million, 11 million per year over a three-year period. That if that's something you could do with Wiseman to where you sign him to a short term, you know, not not expensive contract, that contract's yeah. movable. Like yeah. Bagley is that's a movable contract. Like if yeah. if you're trying to trade with any uh, superstar that that wants out, two things teams want: well, one being first round picks, the other being young players. Like why can't Wiseman if you? Sign him to an extension, and he becomes, and he keeps showing what he's showing. Why can't he be a piece like that, or Bagley, or these guys? You know, it, again, it has to do with them playing well, but with what they're making, like that that Bagley contract. To say what you want about Bagley and what his future looks like in Detroit, could be in the future, could not be. That ten million, eleven million dollars. I know people were frustrated. Some people were. I won't, you know, sp- specifically call them out. <laughs> uh, look at it now. Like, look at the value of those types of contracts. So I love what Troy's doing. I mean, it could be, and I hate using this, but it's true. It could always be worse. It could be the Rockets. Rockets, if if you watch any, and I know no one in Detroit's watch any Rockets basketball, but if you tuned into them at all, you know how many career highs players have put up against the the Rockets and how directionless. The other day, my goodness. And how directionless they look. Like, talk about a team that, you know, right now, no leadership. Talk about Bojan and Alec Burks. Roddy Magruder, they don't have leadership at all with Houston. And you don't even have the voice of reason, the experienced head coach. It, it, I, I compared it. It's almost like a college student running a daycare. That's what it feels like in Houston, man. Yeah. Like you got a, a daycare run by somebody who doesn't have enough life experiences to even teach them what to do or how to do it. Like Steven is over, in over his head. And I do feel bad for him because he, he thought he was coaching James Harden. But this is the benefit of having Dwayne. Say what you want about him as a head coach. To have that voice of reason, that voice of consistency, voice that a guys can respect. I haven't seen anyone quit on Dwayne. I haven't seen anyone come out and say, Dwayne's this, Dwayne's that. I haven't seen Troy come out and say, Dwayne's this, Dwayne's that. So, again, despite whatever you think of Dwayne, we can at least give him credit to, to the, you know, the consistency. And I, what I mean by that is nobody, you know, it, it's been, it, it, look at the win-loss record. I'm with you. One of the worst teams in the NBA. But besides that, like we go on the players, the culture, and what they're trying to build, although it hasn't resulted in losses, at least it hasn't been a complete disaster where players, former players, 
you know, uh, the coach himself coming out and saying this team doesn't compete. Like, man, it could be a lot worse. And I know that's like the most, that's an easy way out, but it's true. It really is. You, it is. And I think that that's something that Troy Weaver actually brought to this team. The ability to be able to realistically do what you want to do. We want to get development out of our players. Yeah, We want them to play meaningful uh, situations and games. But we also, in a pivotal, very, very important free agency and draft, need to have the capital right now. That's more important. Once the injury set in and you realize we're no longer going to be a team that can compete for the play-in, you need a GM who can do the tough thing. You need a GM who can say, listen, I like what y'all want to do this year. I really I really hear it. The comp- competition going to learn to compete every night that's great my job is gm my job is to make sure that the foundation of this team and what we do going forward is stable because we've seen these squads go up and make the playoffs and what there was no stability to what svg had no even though he was he wasn't he just moving and shaking he was making deals trades the roster was turning over but it wasn't looking the same way that troy weaver's doing it no he did not instill the same hope it didn't have the same amount of high level young talent the best we had, bro, was what to look forward to in the SVG era was what Seku and and Stanley. Well, Troy's approach is different because Troy's looking and he's mentioned this multiple times. And Rod always says, "You listen to what they tell you." Mm-hmm. Troy said, well, "We don't want to just pop in and pop out. We want to be there and stay there." Like Troy looks at it in a five ten year window. I think SV like SVG was looking at it in more of this season. Yeah. Next win season. Now. Win, now, win now always. And again, that was yep. the cards he was dealt. Mandate. But at the same time, he was also the GM. So he gets faulted that as well. If you don't do it right. Yeah, you got to take all the blame. So I like Weaver's approach, although the wins and losses, you know, people bring up, well, they've been, they, they stunk for, you know, multiple years. Well, technically the rebuild started when you got Kate, I would say personally, uh, and people can disagree with that, but I, I think it started truly when you got your franchise player in Cade. It's been two seasons, like rebuilds, you, you, especially a complete teardown in which this organization went through. It's not going to take one or two seasons to, this ain't the NFL. So it's going to take time even saying, well, Jeff, it should look better than this. Should it? I mean, you don't have Cade for the whole season and you're depending on two rookies to be, you know, lead your team to victory every single night. It, 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 besides Boyan, obviously Boyan's great, but he's your best player, arguably. Uh, and definitely your best offensive player. Mm-hmm. But what has he given you defensively? Like, not much. That's the whole Jeremy Grant thing we talk about is he was your best player, but Jeremy, you knew was your best defender. Boyan is a complete liability. He's probably given up almost as many points as he's as he's scoring. So it, this team is far from complete. There's a lot of work to do, and that's why this offseason is so important, man. This is the probably the most fun. important offseason of the Troy Weaver era, you could argue. This is the most important free agency going back to when Joe Dumars misspent the Chauncey Billis war. The Chauncey Billis yeah, AI trade, this is pivotal. Yeah, that ben Gordon. trade sent us into the abysmal place that we've been at. Yeah. For a long time. And it wasn't just a trade. It was how they spent the money. That free right. agency, the draft picks, the things that they valued. Think about during that time, bro. Their pivotal draft pick, like the, their pivotal era were like Chauncey. I mean, it was like, I'm sorry, I can't believe I said Chauncey during that era. Charlie Villanueva, mm-hmm. Ben Gordon, Rodney Stuckey. Josh Smith. Josh Smith. These were their Star Wars, bro. These were the Star Wars. These were the, this was the hope. And now we're spending our money to augment that. Let's fast forward to Troy Weaver. Troy Weaver has all this money to add to Jalen Duran, Jaden yep. Ivey, Kay Cunningham. If we just stop there, there's not an era in Detroit basketball where you, you have to go back to the bad boys before you find an era in Detroit. Ba- Show me your shirt, brother. <laughs> before you go to an era in, no. in, in Detroit Pistons history where they built off of, uh, you know, and augmented around the players that they drafted. And not just a long time. And this is a, a multitude of players. This isn't just Andre. Like, remember that that was the plan to build around Andre Drummond. This is Jay Ivey, Cade. Number one, it's a backcourt, which I love way more than building around a center in today's NBA. But then you get Durant, who is a freak in in itself. I mean, we don't know what his potential is. We know it's high, and we know he's young. So a lot to look forward there. But we're not, we haven't even gotten to this year's draft, right? They're probably going to be picking. I would assume top three, hopefully. Like that's another talent. People would say, well, what, what's adding another young guy to this? to this roster doesn't mean the guy has to start immediately, yep. but just to have your contributor, like a, a possible Brandon Miller, you know, Amon uh, Thompson, whoever it is. I mean, Cam yeah. Whitmore, yep. just to have any of these guys, just a part of your roster, man, that's a, that's a success. I mean, it doesn't mean he has to play significant minutes, but again, they're going to continue to add talent. And to answer that question, he went out this year and picked up what 
Boyan, Alec yep. Burks. He added NBA talent. If he gets another draft pick and another two players, mind you, it only costs $30 million a year for Boyan Bogdanovich and Alec Burks. He has the money to be able to do that again and still re-sign the players he has. Another draft pick plus two players that can make the type of impact that Alec Burks and Boyan Bogdanovich make, this team is a solid team. That team would be better than Casey's playoff team and SVG's playoff team mm. with the Pistons. I would take that squad next year because he has the ability to do it. If he can go out in a year where this team is dead in the water and sign Boyan and sign and, and, and trade for Alec, or, or I'm sorry, trade for these guys and convince them to sign extensions. Yeah. I have faith in Troy Weaver going forward. His first year here, he brought in Troy Weaver. He brought in Jeremy Grant. Yeah. I have faith in him. He's going to identify that next type of guy. He probably already has it. If we're to believe Boyan Bogdanovich in the hoop type interview, he said that Troy told him, we're getting busy this summer. This summer we are we're getting, we want to win. This team and this organization wants to win. Right. They're just tired of doing it the way that doesn't bring any type of longevity, any type of stability, um, and has fans really saying, well, this was cool. How hollow did it feel, bro? When we were, um, when the most we had to cheer for, when the Pistons made it with Blake, the most we had to cheer for was what? That he gave his all. Yeah. Not that there was any hope. People knew this team is done. People were saying trade players. I don't want that anymore, bro. I can't go through that anymore. Not not as a as somebody who's not just a fan, not just locked in, but covering the team, bro. Yeah, the worst, I think the worst situation to be in in the NBA is to have a team that's not good enough to win a championship, but isn't rebuilding no like future. they're in they're in the middle and that's where the pistons were and it's it's a terrible time I, I would say the bulls right now are right there where you have talent it's not enough to win but what do you do with these guys they're mostly veterans it's not an ideal position like if you're going to go into a rebuild and you're going to build around players you better hope those players will turn into superstars uh and, and you could compete at a high level you're not building around andre drummond and that's not even just to take a shot at andre but it's the truth like ivy and cade and Duran collectively now that is a young core and we haven't even got to other guys that he's going to be adding in the future. So, or, or guys that are Bro, part this of this draft. roster. So again, that's, that's the great part about Troy is, and this is kind of foreign to us in Detroit. I think that's why people get so frustrated. We're like, what's this guy doing? But well, he's operating like a good general manager. Like it's been a, quite some time before, you know, since we've seen that. Happy birthday, Troy Weaver. Happy. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy, he, I, I don't never understand the hate for Troy um, or any type of, you know, disdain for Troy. It's like, dude, you should be so excited for the future, especially now. Like if, if this season you're at the point where you're like, man, I, 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 it's hard to tune in because I tune into every game. Trust me. I get it. I absolutely understand. I mean, you do too. Like you, you understand the struggle which these fans go through, but doesn't mean the future ain't still bright. And we're not deviating from that. We're no. we've been consistent uh, despite the losses. We still repeat the same message. It does not change what they do this summer, and it doesn't change what we think about them next year, and it doesn't change what we think they'll be in a couple of years. So and check the receipts because yes, it's not like we were sitting here saying that the Charlie V and the Ben Gordon era was going to. No, I remember what I was saying. The receipts are out there. Every era that they've made some decisions that were highly questionable, and we saw this is not going to lead to a foundationable, like you know, the stable yeah future. Yeah, it was like yo, tear this down, tear it down. It's not going to work. This is not working. When Joe Dumars came out, people were calling for his head, bro. They were like, yo, get him out of here because the roadmap that he had laid, it was not producing at all, not on any level, none of the years. This wasn't even about wins and losses. There were years when they were winning uh, somewhat, and it was still like, eh. You knew they weren't doing nothing. They weren't doing nothing. And, and yeah. somewhat is just like maybe like better than they are now, but not necessarily like a top five team in the East. No. They were never that. Uh, it, this is something, when I look at all of the different rebuilds that I've seen, all the different years of basketball, Pistons basketball, it's like, sheesh, it's getting up there for me. Bro. But this one is one of the most succinct, one of the most intelligent ones, one of the ones where, as just from a basketball standpoint, I can look and say, oh, I see what they're trying to do. Like, I'm not saying you're saying, oh, go Pistons, everything. Bro, this takes our time. This takes our money. It takes our life. Right. Being at that, at that arena, bro, on home games until 1230 at night, writing articles, getting interviews, getting the content, all this other stuff. Dog, and you know how many more hours that we put in to do this stuff beyond. It's like the one thing you want to make sure you're doing is getting it right. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to make sure you're doing. You don't want to be out there wasting your time and wasting anybody else's time and getting on here and just having people believe that 
oh, I just think that everything they're doing is great. It's like, nah, there's some things to parse. There's some of things. Of course, there's like, always right, going to be things. Yep. There's always going to be things. But if this GM is proving and this organization is proving that they know how to actually make up for their, their mistakes, I'm all for it, bro. Yeah, building through the draft. I mean, it's been a while. I mean, since the bad boy era, bad boys. I mean, where you truly have guys, your foundational pieces and what you drafted, even going to work. Like, those weren't guys you drafted. Tayshawn, but yeah, but the rest of you, you acquired through trades or, exactly. or you know, so it, it's different. This is new. It, I, I shouldn't say completely new, but it's been a while since you kind of went this route in Detroit where you've built it through the draft. And if you have a good general manager, you can identify talent. Then, you, uh, you know, Joe Dumars was... You know, because I, I got a lot of respect for Joe. Obviously, he brought a championship. He brought a team that was exactly. in the conversation for a long period of time, but he never was the greatest in the draft or free agency, to your point. So those are the knocks. With Troy, we know what he is through trades. We know what he is through the draft and identifying talent. We know what That's he is. observation, bro. Like, you know what I mean? There's there's mm -hmm. differences there. So Troy brings mm -hmm. a lot of things that I love. And Joe could acquire. He, he was good in yes. the acquisition game, and he knew that era. Even though that era was starting to pass him by, he knew that. He didn't know the draft. He didn't know free agents. Right, and that's okay. Right. Hey, you got a championship out of it. You got a lot of Eastern Conference appearances. You got another finals. I, like, I it, enjoyed the era, but yeah, I mean, overall, to Summit, Troy has shown in trades, he's been pr pretty good for the most part. I, I think we can say that. I mean, the guy's consistently fleeced out. Or we haven't seen a huge trade, like a Rashid at the deadline, but you've seen you know, like a, a Wiseman or a Marvin Bagley going out and getting guys for dirt cheap on the low, uh, getting Durant in the trade he made on draft night. Like, there's things he's proven. Now, the next thing is for agency. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I Troy signed Jeremy Grant, and he got a lot of criticism for that, and it worked out. Remember when he was signed, like, $20 million for Jeremy Grant? And then he averaged 20 points per game, and, and everyone's like, oh. Lockdown defense, yeah. And everyone's like, well, I'm cool with paying him 20 million. Right, right. So, like, he, he got that right. But I'm talking when you have a lot of money to spend, what does he do? That's probably the next question for Troy Weaver. I got to see it. And this offseason, he's got the opportunity. This is the one. That's what, It's yeah, yeah. pivotal, man. This is the one that, honestly, we see. It, does he know what he's talking about? Right now, you know, when the teacher comes in, you, you just kind of go, okay. Yeah. I'm right, taking my notes. All right. Okay, you know what? Even though I don't – I wouldn't have put those two together. I can see how that, th that can work. When Rod – bro, I swear Rod is, is tapped in – when he starts to break down how these things fit, when we actually start to get into how the contracts go, when we actually start to get into, yo, are you paying Stewart $15 million a year? That's Think about it. Luke Kennard got the four for 64, man. That's what, uh, 15, 16 million a year? Yeah. Is Are you giving Stu that? To put this in perspective, Alec Burks is getting 10 million a year. Boyan's getting 20 million a year. And it was just like, dang. So he was like, so Wiseman, though, he's not going to command even, he might command, what, half of that? See what I'm saying? What if Troy is already going out of the way to make sure everything, the foundation is laid? So if contract negotiations with Stu are good, awesome. If not, what if Wiseman, you got a backup Durin, plan. Bagley, or one of these guys pop up? What if he likes them all? Then it's just like the Jeremy Grant situation that we said last year. You love him on the roster. You love him as a trade asset. And what did it wind up being? Somebody who we can see on the roster. He was one of our best players, probably our best player, outside of Kay Cunningham. But he made an impact on both ends of the court that we see uh, it's missing yep. this season. And then on top of that, though, so we know he would have been that asset to us on the squad. We were able to trade him and get a haul, bro. If you if if all you got was Jalen Duran, haul. We came away ultimately with Jalen Duran. You got to look at a couple different players. You got to throw in some of those players to get James Wiseman. Mm -hmm. And you got Alec Burks, who's about to be one of your team leaders moving forward. That's just a different level of GMing right now, bro. Yeah. You know, but I like it hey, to know that he's not hamstrung or handcuffed by his draft picks. We saw SVG and the Pistons get hamstrung and handcuffed by Andre Drummond. He's like, none of that's going to happen to me. I'll go get a former number two overall pick who just hasn't had the opportunity. I'll go out there and take a look at RJ Hampton. Yeah, I'm going to take Marvin Bagley. You know what's crazy? How during certain parts of the season, people wanted to trash on the Bagley signing. And, and like, oh, look at him now. Where are those people at now? I get the injuries. But tell me this, bro. Would you be surprised if he was able to flip, flip Marvin Bagley for at least a low-level first round? No. I personally wouldn't be. I personally wouldn't be. When people start losing some of the players that they had on the board – 
and some of these contending teams need a four or five, and they know that Marvin Bagley is not getting paid that much money. Yeah. Why and and you, if he's healthy and producing, yeah, no doubt. I can see it happening, man. I can see it happening. But anything as it relates to your season outlook before we wrap this up? No, I just want to continue to see player development. I know that's the most cheesiest thing, but it's so true. I think the wins and losses to me right now, you, you, I would prefer if they just lost every single game the rest of the season. If I'm being 100% front with you. Play hard. Um, yeah, play hard, but lose, lose at the end. Yeah, I'm all for it. Uh, but my eyes are more on the attention of guys where their futures are a little more uncertain. I think Killian Hayes especially yep, you're talking about language that's that's the guy i'm gonna be watching but even on top of him wiseman bagley those guys guys that are kind of teetering i know what ivy and Duran are gonna be i'm not too i want to watch them play well of course and, and see their progression but still it's it's on the other guys livers now without sadiq bay i want to see him get more run because isaiah livers i think is is proven he deserves at least some minutes uh every single play uh every single game he's, he's showing it man i love livers so just continue to see those guys play well and kind of just, you know, clear, I guess, provide me some clarity on the roster moving forward. I, like by the end of the season, I want to be able to sit there and say, okay, this guy's going to be here. This guy's going to be here. I know this guy's going to be like, kind of have a better idea. Cause right now it's just a collection of young guys that I like, got to prove something mostly. And then you have some veterans in there, but I'm not as yeah. concerned about Boyan playing. If he, if he's hurt, just rest him, man. There's no reason for Boyan to go out there and, and just get hurt, especially when you need him next season. So that's and it, man. Rest on whether he's hurt or not. And I agree with you, man. Like, y'all don't understand. Jeff, Rod, and I love to do this content together. Our schedules kind of put us in a position where we try to get the content in when we can. Right yeah. now, where I do content with Rod, and then we come over and do the other bridge of it with Jeff. And it amazes me how often the, you know, the takes are the same. That was Rod's take, too, man. It's like, look, even, even the players that he wanted to see sit, like we both said, like, Boyan, sit. I don't care if he's injured or not. Wrap him up. Preserve him for next year. Honestly, Jalen Duran, Jay and Ivy, I don't need to see anymore. I don't need it. It's nice to see them play. Yeah, and it's good to get them run. We got too many young players on this squad. We yeah. need to know what's coming in next year. Preserve them. Their style of play is going to put a lot of stress on them in their first year. Yeah, you want to see them play a few more games, but I don't, I don't mind seeing like RJ Hampton, like you said, Wiseman, uh, seeing what Killian and Stu in extended minutes towards the end of the season, who these guys are going to be because Killian and Hayes, Killian Hayes and Isaiah Stewart, these guys are going to be either commanding a lot of money or an investment that we're going to have to make long term. And you're going to want to know that not only can these guys be assets on your roster, but also if you decided to trade them. Yep. After you get these guys off of rookie contracts, they no longer become the tradable as easily tradable assets based on potential that they have right now. So it's like, I want to see Killian. I want to see Stu. I want to know exactly who those guys are. Uh, I want to. I, I don't. We know who Jalen Duran is. He's gotten too many little nicks and, and and scrapes and bumps and bruises. Come on, play. But we know what it is, man. I want to see the development of some of these other guys, not just young guys, but the question marks on the squad. That's what I want to see. And um, really, don't need to see kind of the Boyan show. No, you know he's gonna come in. 20 points. And you know what he like, is. On, yeah, you don't need to see any more of him, man. You want it, you want questions to be answered, and I'm 100% with you. What did Ross say? Jay and Ivy and James Wiseman don't need to develop their pick-and-roll chemistry this year. Like, like, we don't need to see that. It, we need to see if Wiseman can do, have a repeat performance of what he did against the Hornets. Yeah, give him as much ball usage as possible. Exactly. Just put the ball in his hands, dude. Exactly. That's what yeah. it's about, man. Development. See how these guys respond in different situations. And honestly, my number one thing, I was going to save this for last, the defense. Mm -hmm. I, I know that defense is a team thing as well as what you individually put into it with what you can control. Uh, so there's going to be a lot. It's a chemistry thing as well that we're not going to be able to see. But I want to see these guys turn up their individual effort. Yeah, I want to see them turn up an effort that shows that they care. Not just going out there clubbing people, not just going out there playing sloppy. But I mean, really, really, really going out there and showing, you know what? Defense is our identity. Defense is what's going to have me on this roster next season. De defense is going to what's going to be what keeps me in the NBA, even if my shot is not falling. I'm ready to see guys like Killian Hayes step up and be what he, out of his own mouth, said in the beginning of the year he wanted to be. Not just a leader, but a defensive leader. Mm -hmm. so Amen. That's what I want to see, man. See if these guys go out there and for the end of the season, just put on for our brand of Detroit bad boys basketball. Period. Anything else, brother? 
No, nah, I think we covered it all. Yeah. Got you. Well, hey, let's do this drum roll, man. Just for the legend, man. We got the we legend had that birthday dinner. It was awesome. It was amazing. It was awesome. Rod was dropping some facts, dude. I, I, that's why I appreciate Rod. He's, he's, you know, as, as funny as he is, most humble guy ever. And I, I think that's a big part of Rod. He's, I, I wouldn't want to do this with anybody else. Rod's the, uh, he's funny. Yeah. He checks, man, what can't Rod do? Like, that's the real question. It's not what can Rod do? What can't Rod do? Doesn't he call games? He's at funny. State? He's funny. He, he can call mm-hmm. games. He's intelligent. He's humble. He has good advice. Like, he's a mentor. Yeah. Mentor. Definitely. Yeah. It's like, Rod, relax. I mean, you're chill, Rod. Say chill. Save some for, for, for the rest of the Yeah. Time. Like, come <laughs> on. But yeah. Hey, look, we're going to get this drum roll going for the oh. legend, man. Got Jeff I. Freddy, Mr. Everything. My name is Brandon Dent, a.k.a. Detroit Kool-Aid. And for the Woodward Pistons platform, yo, let's get this drum roll going. Let's hey, get it. Yo, shout out to the legend, Detroit News Rod Beard. And y'all, till next time, tell us, what is your season outlook? What do you what do you want to see from the squad? And What are you hoping Troy Weaver does in the offseason? Peace out, y'all. Uh, uh, mm, 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 mm.